Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Volunteer State Community College in Gallatin, Tennessee, for today's TCCAA women's basketball action between the Lady Raiders of Roan State and the Lady Pioneers of Volunteer State. First game of the new year to be broadcast with an audio broadcast. And our first time to have a camera operator today. So we should be getting some great shots during today's contest. Right now you're seeing a wide shot that you saw all of last game that these Lady Pioneers played in a loss, hoping to get their first conference win of the year. Of course, as always, we will have to mute for the national anthem that we are getting ready for now before the announcement of the starting lineup. So you will watch the national anthem, but you won't get to hear it. And now it's time to play ball, or at least here the starting lineups. <clears throat> the starting lineups for the Lady Raiders. Cadence Jackson, 5'7", freshman from Coalfield, Tennessee. Number three, Jasmine Williams, a 5'9", freshman from Knoxville Catholic in Knoxville, Tennessee. Number four, Aniston Holt, 5'10", freshman from Cannon County, and that is Woodbury, Tennessee. Another freshman, number five, Addison Oliver, 5'8", from Harriman, Tennessee, the location of Rune State Community College. And number 24, Jayla Cobb, a 5'7", freshman from Upperman High School. And that is Baxter, Tennessee. They are coached by David Harnish in his fifth year. They have a record of 10 and five overall, one and three in the conference. And now for the Lady Pioneers, starting for head coach Otis Key, number one, Monica Peralta, sophomore guard from Seagull High School, Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Number, ten, number two, Kayla Northrup, also a sophomore guard from Independence High School down in Independence, Tennessee, or just south in uh, Williamson County, south of Nashville. Number five, Nye Rankins, another sophomore. She's a forward out of Lebanon High School, Lebanon, Tennessee. And number 15, Bree Ellis, sophomore guard from Beach High School right here in Hendersonville, Tennessee, down the road from Vol State Campus, a transfer from Freed Hardman. And number 24, Emma Disney, another sophomore, freshman from Greenbrier High School, just outside of Nashville as well, up in Robertson County. Head coach Otis Key in his ninth year. 
manager Aisha, Aisha Matthews sitting next to Coach Key with a shortened bench today. No Tanaya Petway or Winter Thompson. Tanaya battling the academic issues and trying to get some paperwork signed off on. Has not played in a game yet here in 2024. Lady Pioneers with a 1 and 15 record, 0 and 5 in conference plays. That ball is tapped up and possession goes to the Lady Raiders. They will work left to right on your device as you watch today's game on the Ball State Sports Network. Bree Ellis gets the steal on the errant pass as Kayla Northrup has that dribble tapped out of bounds by. Jayla Cobb, Northrop into Monica Peralta, who will get the offense started for Lady Pioneers. Franklin sets the screen. Peralta took two Lady Raiders with her. Northrop just outside, dribbles in with the right-handed runner off the glass, and it's good. Kayla Northrop for two points. Lady Pioneers come out in a full court press. Bree Ellis and Emma Disney guarding, and the pass is stolen by Peralta. Gives it up to Ellis, who goes around to the left hand, and she gets that layup to go. Four to nothing, early lead for Vol State. Pass up to Holt, who gets it into Oliver, but. Addison Oliver is pushed by Emma Disney, and that'll be her first foul. With that shortened bench, Coach Key is going to hope that Lady Pioneers don't get in early foul trouble and another turnover. Bad pass, and it goes up to Ellis with the right hand this time. Another field goal for Bree Ellis. Lady Pioneers three for three in field goals. Already, Lady Raiders almost another errant pass. Get it inside, and the shot, first shot of the ball game, goes in for Cadence Jackson. Bree Ellis, three-point shot, no good. Rebound to Emma Disney, off the glass and in. Eight to two, Ball State with the early lead. From the top of the key, shot off the right iron, batted around and saved by Roan State. Three-pointer, no good. Rebound to Cobb. Dribbles back out to the three-point line. Pass inside to Addison Oliver, who travels with the basketball. It'll be Vol State. Ball Nye Rankins will inbound. Woman-to-woman -woman defense for Roan State. Peralta tried the right side, came back to the left, now goes back to right. Emma Disney will fire up a three, and that will catch nothing but air and dribble harmlessly out of bounds. Roan State will inbound. Northrop and Peralta up on the press. Roan State able to break that easily. Cobb, Cobb with a dribble drive, goes all the way to the rim and gets a, a layup. Cobb, 5'7", freshman, Upperman High School. As Peralta started to drive. Looked like she was going to kick out to Ellis, but got fouled by Jasmine Williams. It'll be her first, team first. The Ball State will inbound underneath their own basket with an 8-4 lead. Here in the first quarter, Bree Ellis, nice move right there, and that's her third layup. She's got six early. A little more tenacity on this press. Roan State gets it across the timeline. 22 on the shot clock. Cobb will fire with nobody in her face and a three-pointer. She has five of the first seven for Roan State. A.J. Fawson on the uh, camera early on here. The head 
engineer. Peralta on the drive, off the glass. It's a little short. Disney with the rebound. High. Disney with four early. Almost a travel in the backcourt there. And a steal by Nye Rankins on an errant pass by Addison Oliver. Bree Ellis, left-handed, using that strong left hand. And another layup for Bree Ellis. She is getting to the rim. Stop and pop, just a little short. Rebound, knocked out of bounds, will be Ball State's basketball. Roan State wearing these red jerseys and the blue numbers on them. A little bit harder to read, and not knowing the players. Got to wait for them to turn around, thank goodness. Cadence Jackson doesn't have a really long ponytail, and I can read that number when she turns around. Peralta guarded at the top of the key will drive, and she will go in against two Lady Raiders and throw that one out of bounds. Officials for today's game, Noble Patterson the third, Dwayne Burks, Sean Bullock are the arbiters for the women's game today. It will be a men's game following about 30 minutes after the women. Strong drive by Addison Tolliver to get her first bucket of the ball game. 14-9 Vol State leads is our Jersey Mike's first sub of the game for the Lady Pioneers, Kyra Sharon. Steps in as that pass is stolen by Roan, and a layup is no good. That's by Jayla Cobb as Kayla Northrup gets herself caught in the corner and has that pass stolen, and she fouls on the layup. A good foul there as Oliver not able to make the free throw, but Northrup picks up her first foul, second team foul as Four subs come into the game. Jersey Mike's located right across the street from campus here at Volunteer State. I've had half of my number nine club supreme before today's game. I'll eat the second half of that sub between games. Voted number one by this broadcaster. Best sub in town as Oliver sinks the first free throw that is attempted today. And she will get two. Four points now for Oliver. Oliver is the leading scorer on the team for Roan State. Fourth in the conference at 15.3 points per game. Amari Tolliver checked in as well as Ella Disney who got that pass stolen. And another stolen pass by Kyra Sharon. She is hounded by Cobb. She gives it up to Ella Disney, the younger sister of Emma, who has that, pad, that shot possibly blocked. At least I'm going to say it was blocked as it hit off the corner of Cobb over to, who is that, Aniston Holt for three. All up court, Sharon can't get that one to go as she gets fouled at. She was throwing up a layup. Foul is on Jayla Cobb, her first team second. Tyra Sharon from Sycamore High School. She's a freshman. Will go to the line. So Amari Tolliver and Ella Disney. Came in the ball game for the Lady Pioneers. Sharon's first free throw is no good. Sharon second on the team in scoring 8.7. Right behind 8.9 by Kayla Northrup as she gets the second freebie to go. Kyra Sharon shows number two in the conference, three-point shooting at 45%. Number one is Jayla Cobb at over 50%. Ooh, Bree Ellis almost got the block on that drive by Oliver. She picks up a foul. She apparently got some of the arm of Oliver. First free throw by Oliver is no good. 
She is now two for three at the strike. Shooting it at 66.7%. Shooting it at 75% here for this game. Three for four at the line. Five points. Bree Ellis gets it across the timeline. Gives it up to Ella Disney, who's going to fire from three off the front of the rim. And bounces to the corner where Cobb picks it up. She will drive past Bree Ellis and go into the paint, but gives it up into the corner for a three ball that hits air and has another pass up to Bree Ellis if she can control it, and she does in the corner, but that pass gave Roan State a chance. Kyra Sharon for three, and no good off to the right. Sharon will stop the ball at the timeline as Aniston Holt gives it up. To Bristol Calhoun, fakes left, goes right off the glass, and good. Three minutes to go here in the quarter, and Kyra Sharon has a wide-open layup. Nobody covered her. She picks up her first field goal of the ball game. Mari Tolliver is sophomore guard from White House Heritage. Her twin sister, Armani, is... Sitting as a player coach, I can see her directing defense. Now while she's sitting down on the bench. Katie Walker out top, gives it up to Calhoun. And a pass inside, a reverse layup is good by Aniston Holt. Basket is good. Foul is charged to Amari Tolliver, her first team fourth. Five team fouls in a quarter will put the opposing team at the line if it's a non-shooting foul. So they'll get two free throws as Holt completes the old school three-point play. Roan State with a 20 to 17 lead. They have solved the defense and apparently the full court pressure by the Lady Pioneers is Kayla Northrup working on Jayla Cobb and she's going to get fouled as she goes to drive and reach in foul by Addison Oliver, her first team third. Kayla Northrup will go to the line for the first time today. Northrop shooting 64% from the free throw line. Misses the first. Northrop in 24 games a year ago averaged five, almost six points a game. She gets one of two. And a bucket difference now is the pass up court. Jayla Cobb at will sidestep over for a three and get it to go. As I said, number one in the league in three-point shooting percentage. Bree Ellis faked the three, and she's going to drive. Right-hand layup is missed. Nye Rankins, who's back in the game, is going to get fouled. The foul's going to be on Roan State. Bristol Calhoun with the harm. That's her first, team fourth. Both teams with four fouls, so the next foul by either team on a non-shooting variety. We'll go to the line. Kyra Sharon for three. It's no good. and Hit off the hands of Nye Rankins. Trying to get that rebound, but it goes out of bounds. Roan State ball, minute 38 to go in the ball game. Or, I'm sorry, in the first quarter. That would have been a quick game. 23 to 18. Walker gives it up to Cobb. Fake three by Holt. Jumper's no good. Rebound to Roan State. Did not hit rim, so shot clock did not reset. Holt, three point territory will get a nice pass in as another reverse layup. This one by Calhoun. Calhoun off the bench with four. Roan State with a 25 to 18 lead. We're under a minute in the first quarter. Peralta working one on two and she goes against two more and gets that runner to go. Monica Peralta's first bucket of the ball game. 
Calhoun pass over to Holt is off the hand and out of bounds. Entering the game for Roan State, Jalisa Sanders, number 11, and number three, Jasmine Williams. Also re-entering is Addison Oliver. So Walker, Calhoun, Williams, Oliver, and Sanders is a three-point shot in and out by Kayla Northrup. A rebound to Oliver. She will go the length of the floor with the underhand scoop shot. Does not go, but Bree Ellis will pick up the foul. That'll be her second. It'll be a shooting foul. Addison Oliver. Now four for five at the line. In and out. Rebound to Rankins. Peralta up court to Ellis, over to Sharon. Back to Ellis. She's wondering right now, did she already dribble? She puts it on the deck, passes to Sharon, who gets that three ball to go. Her first three of the ball game. Just before the buzzer sounds, and an excellent quarter as Roan. 26, Ball State 23. We will take a quick break. Be right back with the second quarter. You're listening to the Ball State Sports Network. We're all working in the cloud. But what really is the cloud? If you start pulling back the clouds themselves, you find out it's an infrastructure. Computer science is really computer engineering. Right now, Middle Tennessee is quickly becoming a growing tech hub with several IT companies that are looking for skilled workers. If you're pursuing the CIT program at Ball State, you're preparing yourself to fill those positions. Have you ever wondered what happens when you click buy it now? A whole series of transactions take place from the manufacturer to your front door. That is logistics and supply chain management. At Ball State, we offer end-to-end -end supply chain courses. Going into the future, our students need to understand these processes. A lot of business is dependent upon getting a product on time. Students here at Ball State are able to leave here with that knowledge. Because the supply chain is counting on me. Tim Reese back at the Toyota of Gallatin Broadcast Center on the campus of Volunteer State Community College. We're watching the Lady Raiders of Roan State against the home team, the Lady Pioneers of Vol State. 26-23 after one quarter. Kayla Northrup with the ball for Vol State, wearing the home white. Gives it up to Disney, kicks over to Sharon, who hit a three ball right at the end of the first quarter that the Lady Pioneers within three. Sharon, another three ball. Off the iron, rebound to Northrop. She'll back it out and kick over to Peralta. We've got a timeout called, I believe, uh, the uh, shot clock needed to go down to 20 after that uh, shot off the iron, and it went back to 30 instead. So uh, official Noble Patterson the third called timeout so that we can get that corrected. And it looks like we are correct. 14 seconds on a shot clock. Roan State looking for their second conference win. Lady Pioneers with a three ball by Kayla Northrup. It's this game tied. Six points for Northrop. Lady Pioneers are looking for their first win in conference play. Inside, and we're going to get a travel as Nye Rankins put body right on Addison Oliver. There's a chance that could have been a call to foul on Miss Rankins. All State got the nod there as Sharon gets it across the timeline. She will drive right to the basket and get fouled. It'll be a two shot. Free throw. Fouls on number 12, Bristol Calhoun. That'll be her second team first
Sharon's first free throw is good. Power Sharon, Kayla Northrup, Monica Peralta, Emma Disney, and Nye Rankins starting five here in the second quarter. Second free throw, no good. Sharon, two for four in free throw attempts in this ball game as Emma Disney looked like she took a charge, and she did. Waiting. For Sean Bullock to uh, make that call. Again, Bristol Calhoun, who did not start the game, picked up her third foul as Peralta splits the defense there. Sharon's going to fire from three. No good off the front of the iron. Rebound to Jaleesa Sanders. Pass up to Jasmine Williams, who will drive on Disney. Shot looked like it was blocked by Nye Rankins. We'll see if they get Disney on the with the body, but they don't. They get Nye Rankins with the foul on the arm. And Jersey Mike's subs in for Roan State, and Armani Tolliver gets her first action of today's ball game. She replaces. Sharon, free throw no good by Williams. All State with a 27-26 lead here in the second quarter. Williams ties the game. Peralta out to Disney for a high arching three off the glass, no good, rebound by Rankins, and she can't get the layup to go. Rebound to Shayona Morton. She's checked into the game. Jayla Cobb can't leave her open there. Gets that one to bounce around. Rankins with the rebound up to Tolliver. Monty Tolliver pass over to Northrup, who's open for three. And that's off the back of the iron as Morton was closing out. Two on one. Now turns into a two-on-two, two and the pull-up jumper is no good. Northrop trying to dribble it out, still has it with three Lady Raiders defending her. Gets it over to Tolliver, and she's going to draw the foul on Jaleesa Sanders. That'll be her first. They call that a 15? 15 wasn't even close. They put 15 up on the board. As a reach-in foul by Morton. No, no question on that one. I'll put 15 in there. That's what they put up on the scoreboard, but I thought that was Jaleesa Sanders over there by Armani Tolliver on the far boundary. Oliver again hounded by Cobb and Williams, trying to dribble out of it, finally able to get it to Northrop for three. That's a little long. Rebound to Rankins. She dribbles it out, and we're going to have a 30-second timeout. Looks like uh, Coach Key is going to call that. Again, I think we had a clock stoppage because of the shot clock. So... We will keep it here for the 30-second timeout. Tie ball game, 27-27. Ball State was down by three at the end of the first quarter, but a Kayla Northrop three tied it up, and a Kyra Sharon put him up 27-26, but Jasmine Williams got one of two to go. And we have a tie game with just under seven minutes to go in the second quarter. Not familiar with girls basketball. I'd be surprised if you're listening in today, but play four quarters in uh, women's basketball. I called them girls. I apologize if that upsets anybody. I'm old, so these are very young ladies to me. We used to call it girls basketball even when I played baseball at Belmont College way back. That's how old I am. It was Belmont College when I went there in Nashville, Tennessee, now Belmont University. Monica Peralta 
Pounded by Jayla Cobb. I'm sorry, that's Kira Everett. Four on a shot clock. Northrop's going to have to fire one up. She won't be able to get it away. Jasmine Williams gets the loose ball, dribbles it across the timeline, and she'll kick out to the corner. Cobb guarded by Tolliver. So the ball goes into Morton. Cobb at the free throw line. A runner is good. Cobb now with 10 points. Northrop guarded by Sanders. Dribbles all the way in. She's going to draw a foul. This one is called on number 11, Jalisa Sanders. That is the fifth team foul. So two free throws for the next six minutes plus here in the second quarter. This, of course, was a shooting foul. Northrop gets the first to go. Northrop to tie the game up, and she does. 29 all. Eight points for Kayla Northrop, the sophomore out of Independence High School. Shot at 77% from the free throw line a year ago. Trying to get back up there as Williams gets the drive, gets the bucket to go, and draws the foul. Emma Disney gets her second foul. It's the second foul of the quarter for Ball State. Williams gets her first field goal of the ball game. Back at the free throw line. Three-point play is good. She now has four. A 32-29 lead by Roan State. Out of Harriman, just this side of Knoxville, off of I-40. Thanks for joining us on the Ball State Sports Network as Tolliver's pass over to Peralta. Cadence Jackson picks up the hold. That'll be two free throws for Armani Tolliver. Oliver's first is no good. It is only her 14th free throw attempt of the year. Came in shooting 85% and 0 for 2. She's now 11 for 15 for the season. Williams at the top. Over to Jackson, back to Williams. Kick into Cobb, and that pass is knocked away by Rankins. Tolliver probing and she will pass into Disney. It's a little off and Disney with a hustle play to tap that out to Peralta. She's going to drive, kick out to Northrop for three. It's no good. Rebound is tapped out. Northrop picks it up and she's going to drive in at the elbow and get the jump shot to go. Northrop with seven in the quarter. Ten for the game. Lady Pioneers down by one. Tapped away from behind. I believe that was Cadence Jackson on the drive. Peralta's just going to go straight on in, and that was an ill-advised shot right there. She was one on two. Jackson with the pass from Holt. Jackson's second bucket of the ball game. 34-31, Rome State leads. Matthew Gregory now on the camera. Student here at Vol State. Northrop for three. It's a little long. Rebound to Everett. Pass up to Cobb. Zone defense now employed by Vol State. Three pointers, no good. Hops right over the basket after hitting the front of the rim. Nye Rankins with the rebound. That pass or dribble was knocked out of there. And up to Williams, two on one. Nice fake and drive by Williams. Good looking player right there. Northrop has that ball stolen by Everett. Shot is no good and Williams in there one on three gets the rebound as Northrop will get it the reach in foul. That'll be her second. Third 
three team fouls as Lady Pioneers will bring in two Jersey Mike's subs into the ball game. Ella Disney and Kyra Sharon check in for Monica Peralta and Kayla Northrup inbound to Jackson who after getting the pass back shoots misses rebound to Williams who throws the ball out of bounds. So Armani Tolliver, Kyra Sharon, Ella Disney, Nye Rankins, and Emma Disney in the ball game. Sharon had to work for that pass up to Ella Disney, her and her sister, are in the ball game, and Ella made a pass to somebody who wasn't there. She split the difference between Armani Tolliver and sister Emma Disney. I think she was expecting Tolliver to cut into the corner and Armani was thinking something differently. Williams, three-point the top, and she'll kick over to Aniston Holt, whose three-point attempt hits off the rim and goes out of bounds. Full court pressure by Roan State as they lead by five. See if they try to trap Sharon. They do not as Cobb has... Sharon, Sharon's wide open for three, and she's going to take that shot every day. Nye Rankins, he called for over-the-back foul on Aniston Holt. That will be Rankins' second foul. Fourth foul. So now with 2.44 to go in the half, both teams are in the double bonus. If you want to join the show, please send an email, as you see it up there on the screen, to treesports at gmail.com. Let me know who you're rooting for, where you're listening and watching from. If you got some inside information on one of these players, be happy to take it now. Don't feed me a line here, okay? Make sure it's truthful information, okay? I don't have time to fact check. Shot missed by... Ball State is a fake three attempt in a drive by Everett. And now over into the corner. Two-pointer by Cadence Jackson. Cadence Jackson, Jayla Cobb, and Kira Everett. Look like triplets out there on the court. Nye Rankins drives on Williams and as it blocked, but Williams gets her with the body. So Rankins will go to the line. That's Jasmine Williams' second foul of the ball game. Entering for Roan State. Checking in for Jasmine Williams is Addison Oliver. Williams checks out with six points all in the second quarter. Also entering is Katie Walker. Number 21. Rankins misses the first free throw attempt. One for two at the line as Amari Tolliver will check in for Nye Rankins. Identical twins, Armari and Armani Tolliver, both in the game for Vol State. Along with, so we have two sets of sisters out there and Kyra Sharon all by herself. Kyra, I don't know if you have any siblings, but if they're female and they can play basketball, why aren't they playing right here? Couldn't get three sets of sisters out there at one time, anyway, as Holt as the turnaround. And Armani. Gets the foul. Her first. Anderson Holt, two for two at the free throw line. Gets a second shot. And that's now 40. 
all working in the cloud. But what? The Lady Raiders. Ella Disney in the corner gives it up to Emma. Now out to Armani over to Ella. A high arching three. Misses everything, but I believe that is tapped out and will be Vol State basketball. Tapped out by Cadence Jackson. We've got to find somebody to throw it in. There we go. Armari Tolliver now steps back into foul, or, uh, out of bound territory. And, Gets it into Emma Disney. Gets a handle on it. Sharon with the quick jumper or quick shot. Probably didn't get off her feet. Gets her first field goal of the quarter. Nine points for Sharon over her average as that soft little shot by Addison Oliver goes in. and Eight-point lead, 36 seconds to go. Ball State can't take the last shot of the half. At least their first one they can't. Kick over to Ella for three. High shot for three is good. Ella Disney, her first bucket of the game. Ella scoring four plus points a game. Shooting it from 31% at the three point line. Shot no good. And Ella Disney with five, two shots or two seconds got another shot at it from three off the front of the iron and no good. And we are going to halftime as the Lady Pioneers on the uh, back of that three pointer get it within five, 42 to 37. So we will go to half, come back with about three minutes to go before the start of the third quarter and hopefully have some unofficial stats for you. This is Tim Reese in the Toyota of Gallatin Broadcast Center bringing you today's action between Roan State and Vol State. Thanks for listening and watching on the Vol State Sports Network. all working in the cloud. But what really is the cloud? If you start pulling back the clouds themselves, you find out it's an infrastructure. Computer science is really computer engineering. Right now, Middle Tennessee is quickly becoming a growing tech hub with several IT companies that are looking for skilled workers. If you're pursuing the CIT program at Ball State, you're preparing yourself to fill those positions. Have you ever wondered what happens when you click buy it now? A whole series of transactions take place from the manufacturer to your front door. That is logistics and supply chain management. At Vol State, we offer end to end supply chain courses. Going into the future, our students need to understand these processes. A lot of business is dependent upon getting a product on time. Students here at Vol State are able to leave here with that knowledge. Because the supply chain is counting on me. The volunteer state has always been home to pioneers. Dreamers and hard workers blaze their paths here. From the TVA to Mountain Dew to touchscreen monitors to the Grand Old Opry, Tennessee has been home to innovators, creators, and entertainers. From humble beginnings to changing the world, Tennesseans have pushed the boundaries of what is possible. We pioneer healthcare, infrastructure, engineering, and product development. At Volunteer State College, we've developed our degree certifications to carry the torch of Tennessee's success with flexible options to help you blaze your pathway. We are searching for pioneer-minded students who are on their own journey of growth. Learn how these pathways are shaping the future of Tennessee. Like those that have come before, blaze your pathway. Your career awaits, Ball State. The volunteer state has always been home to pioneers. Dreamers and hard workers blaze their paths here. 
From the TVA to Mountain Dew to touchscreen monitors to the Grand Old Opry, Tennessee has been home to innovators, creators, and entertainers. From humble beginnings to changing the world, Tennesseans have pushed the boundaries of what is possible. We pioneer healthcare, infrastructure, engineering, and product development. At Volunteer State College, we've developed our degree certifications to carry the torch of Tennessee's success with flexible options to help you blaze your pathway. We are searching for pioneer-minded students who are on their own journey of growth. Learn how these pathways are shaping the future of Tennessee, like those that have come before. Blaze your pathway. Your career awaits. Ball State.
One thing I would say that's really special about Fourth State is essentially the relationship that the institution has with its students. This is a place where you can get comfortable and you can be fine-tuned with the people that are in the same field as you are. Ball State is like my second home. I've gained so much here, I can't even describe it all. So my story began for me about five years ago. Had the world in the palm of my hands. I go into work one day and then I'm told, you're gonna to be laid off indefinitely. We don't have a space or a place for you. And there was two things I could have done. I could have just folded and just said, you know what, my life is ruined, it's over, I'm defeated. Or I could pick myself up, dust myself off and say, let's start again. And so I decided that I would come to Ball State. Ball State's prepared me by giving me all the skills I need to start off. This first class is about mechanical engineering and more of the physical side of mechatronics just creating 3D objects with routers and mills. This is where it's all at. I didn't realize how great this place was until I really explored my options. But we have a great recording industry program. Um, we have great equipment. We have some faculty here who have worked in the industry. I love Allstate. I would recommend it to anybody. I want to go into PR and journalism. Being at a smaller community college helped me to better navigate and know what to expect when I'm ready to expand my studies at another university. I think this was the perfect start to my journey. Possibilities are endless. It's a solid foundation that you can go anywhere in the country with. My dad and my parents period were my biggest champions. He got sick and we didn't know it. He died of cancer, it was sudden. And he kept asking me, baby, when are you gonna graduate? I was like, it's coming. <laughs> it's coming. I really thought I couldn't do it, but I was determined. And here I am now at the finish line, living proof you can do anything that you put your mind to. Just gotta believe. This has been a great journey. I have nothing but great memories. And I will cherish these memories for as long as I can. It's been tough. It really has been tough. I've had a lot of hills to climb. I've had obstacles. But now I'm at the top of the mountain and the view is incredible. I see so many possibilities in front of me. The ball state, it did, it changed my life. My name is Brent Cross, I'm a student at Ball State. This is my first day. All my cousins have gone here and said it's always a good school. It's a lot different than high school. There's tons of people and I don't know anybody. Do you need help finding a class or you good? My name is Trenise Palmer. I'm a student at Ball State Community College. Not just kind of help with students find their way around campus. This is starting my second year uh, here at Ball State. Let's see what we can get done. But you have a lot of high school students that are, you know, have a hard time transitioning between high school requirements and college requirements. What I like about Ball State is that you get to get involved with a lot of the, you know, campus events and campus clubs and society. So. And I'm pretty much taking advantage of all those things, so. My name is Kita De La Cruz. I play baseball at Volunteer State, and I am a pioneer. Well, I wasn't the greatest student in high school. I barely passed. I never really strived to do better. I didn't know where I was going to go to college. As of now, I'd like to go to Grand Junction, win a ring over there. And then after that, in June, go in the draft. Here we go. I have high expectations. I expect to learn a lot. Just doing what I gotta do. I'm studying business administrations right now. Yeah, I plan on graduating here and go to like MTSU or Tech or something. 
My goal is to become a surgeon and in the process I'm majoring in. Tim Reese back at the Toyota of Gallatin Broadcast Center in the mezzanine level inside Pickle Field House at the Richard Moore Gymnasium on the campus of Volunteer State Community College. Thanks for being with us today for Roan State visiting Vol State. Here are the halftime unofficial statistics. First for the visiting Lady Raiders leading scorers or leading scorer, Jayla Cobb with 10 points, Anison Holt and Addison Oliver with eight apiece, Cadence Jackson and Jasmine Williams with six apiece, and Bristol Calhoun with four points. Bristol's the only one in foul trouble. She picked up three fouls in the first half. That's a total of 42 points to have a 42 to 37 lead over the Lady Pioneers. Lady Pioneers are led in scoring by Kayla Northrup with 10 points, Kyra Sharon with nine, Bree Ellis an early eight points for field goals in the first quarter, four points for Emma Disney, three for Ella Disney, two for Monica Peralta, and one for Nye Rankins for a total of 37 points. Kayla Northrup, Nye Rankins with two fouls apiece as does Bree Ellis and Emma Disney for the Lady Pioneers. So nobody in significant foul trouble for head coach Otis Key's squad. They are a little bit uh, depleted today. Have only nine on the score sheet. The Lady Raiders. In from Harriman, Tennessee, about three hours down I-40, east headed toward Knoxville. Of course, Gallatin is just about 20 miles north east of Nashville, Tennessee, up here in Sumner County. So thanks for all of you that are watching and listening on the Vol State Sports Network on YouTube. Our first broadcast of the year was not able to make it to Monday's game for the Lady Pioneers. We are set for basketball as Lady Raiders inbounds. Jasmine Williams, Jayla Cobb, Cadence Jackson, Anderson Holt, and Addison Oliver in the game. Jackson over to Williams, who did not start the ball game, but had a significant second quarter as Anderson Holt gets the first three ball of the second half to go. Her second three-pointer of the game. She now has 11. Monica Peralta, Emma Disney, Kayla Northrup, Bree Ellis, and Kyra Sharon starting five as that ball gets on the floor. We did not have a jump ball in the first half, but we're going to have a tie-up that will go to the Lady Pioneers here in their first offensive possession. Monica Peralta will inbound as Richard Moore Gymnasium has gotten very quiet. Got a couple hundred people here in attendance. And they get pretty cold here in Middle Tennessee as the day wears on. That's a in pass that was knocked out. Kyra Sharon at the buzzer, the shot clock. Two point bucket for Sharon. She now has 11. Williams to Jackson, Jackson over to Oliver, back to Jackson. Oliver guarded by Peralta, drives and has that ball knocked away. Northrop dribbling up and will go to the block and have that one stolen, but then Addison Oliver dribbles out of bounds. The hometown girl from Harriman, Tennessee, all freshmen. Roan State inbound is stolen, and Kyra Sharon tries to steal it back, but she's going to pick up a foul. That'll be her first foul of the ball game, first of the half for Ball State. Roan State will inbound side back court. Williams running the offense. 
for the Lady Raiders. 5'9 freshman from Knox Catholic. Jayla Cobb dribbles to the right, gets a pick, but Sharon goes right through it. And dribble is almost lost, but picked back up. They, they, they changed the 30-second uh, clock, though, for some reason. I guess they thought that was a change of possession. Ended up not mattering as uh, Peralta got the missed shot. No foul call, just an out of bounds. So Ball State will inbounds down by six with eight minutes to go in the third quarter. Woman to woman defense for Roan State. Peralta kicks out the Sharon backs. Up, she's going to get a screen from Emma Disney. Kicks over to Bree Ellis. Dribbles right. Northrop from three, no good. Off the front of the iron. Rebound to Roan State. All State gets back. Caden, Cadence Jackson has a tic-tac-toe passing. Gets an easy bucket by Addison Oliver. She now has 10 for the game. Bree Ellis for three, good. Nothing but nylon for Bree Ellis. Transfer from Free to Hardman by way of Beach High School. Oliver dribbling and it's knocked out of bounds. I think she was expecting a foul. There was a lot of contact between her and Monica Peralta underneath the basket with 20 on the shot clock. They're going to get together, the two of the three officials, to see if, in fact, that's what should be up there. And Noble Patterson the third will come over and to the scorer's table to talk to the officials there. Apparently, all is good. It's exactly seven minutes on the Toyota of Gallatin scoreboard. Thanks again to Toyota of Galton, located right across the street from Ball State. His three-pointer is missed. Rebound to Oliver. She's fouled as she goes back up. Foul's going to be on Bree Ellis. That's going to be her third. Addison Oliver at the line. where She is four of six in today's ballgame, now four of seven. Oliver, the leading scorer for Roan State, fourth in the conference. 15.3 points a game. She gets one out of two. And the Jersey Mike's first sub of the second half is Nye Rankins, who checks in for Bree Ellis. Nye is her second year as a lady pioneer. She is out there with four second year lady pioneers along with Freshman, Kira Sharon. Looks like a zone defense now, or a matchup zone, I guess. Or now, now a, it's actually a woman on woman defense. Northrop thought she didn't have much time, as it was at four on the shot clock. She thought maybe it was down to one, and she threw up a wild three pointer, drew nothing but air, but. Rebound was caught by Peralta while she was out of bounds. Williams dribbles up to the three-point line and kicks to the right. Jackson over to Oliver. Back to Williams. Into Oliver working on Peralta. Goes right and then back to her left. She's going to go back to the free throw line for two shots. Foul's going to be on Emma Disney, her... Third, Oliver back at the line. It's the first. Ella Disney at the scorer's table. Probably going to check in for her sister Emma as Oliver hits two free throws. She has five points for the quarter, and Emma does come sit down. Sister Ella 
takes her place. Ella played her high school basketball at Community Christian while Emma was at Greenbrier. Northrop Drive splits the defense and gets fouled as she goes up for the, the layup. Cadence Jackson picks up her second foul. Northrop at the line. First free throw is good. Northrop good on those two. First two points of the half, down by six, 50 to 44. Just under six minutes to go. Another full court pressure again. Jayla Cobb dribbling it out of trouble. Oliver now at the corner gets that pass knocked away by Peralta, dribbling toward the basket with the left hand. No good, but she's going to draw a foul. Addison Oliver picks up her second foul. Came foul two, but Peralta was in the act of shooting. She is at the line for the first time today. Peralta's first attempt is good. Monica, a sophomore from Siegel High School in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Little strong on that one. Rebound to Roan State. Steal by Ella Disney, trying to get it over to Sharon, and that pass is stolen as well. But and it's going to be off of Sharon. It'll be Roan State basketball. Another blocked pass, but this one gets to the Lady Raiders. Cobb on the inside being blocked or guarded by Nye Rankins. She tried to dribble out of the block area and is called for a travel. Monica Peralta dribbles quickly across the timeline and then waits for her teammates to set up the offense. Looks like four down on the block. Sharon pops out on the left side. She's looking for Northrop on the curl with the left hand. Too strong. Ball knocked out of bounds by Northrop. Substitute in for the Lady Raiders. Katie Walker got a little time in the first half, did not score. Checks in the ball game. Another blonde headed ponytail. She kicks out to Oliver at the top of the three-point line, and that hits the guide wire above the backboard, and it is out of bounds. Ball State basketball down by five. Peralta dribbling to the right side, looking for that screen. Northrop now out to Disney. About 30 feet away from the basket with 12 to go on the clock. She's going to drive and get the bump by Addison Oliver, who picks up her third foul. Just three team fouls, but Ella Disney will go to the free throw line and miss the first. All state fourth in the conference and free throw percentage at 64.7. Disney gets one of two. As Bristol Calhoun with three fouls checks in for Oliver. Cobb up to Williams, now back to Cobb. And over to Holt. Wide open underneath is Calhoun who gets the left-handed layup to go. Full court pressure by the Lady Raiders. Ella Disney now double team gives it up to Rankins. It's knocked out at two on one break as Katie Walker is stopped. Nice defensive play by Ella Disney to get back quickly and knock that pass out of bounds.
Cobb. Now under to Williams, who tried that cross-court pass through the paint. It's knocked out of bounds by Kyra Sharon. Again, if you're interested in joining the show, you can send me an email, treesports at gmail.com. As Cobb gets her first bucket of the second half, Lady Raiders go up by eight. Knocked away, but Ella Disney in the right spot. Can't get the runner to go. Rebound to Rankins. Sharon's going to fire for three, and it's good. Kyra Sharon. Her second three of the ball game. Five in the quarter. Williams contested inside the paint. Now another shot by Cobb is no good in and out. Peralta trying to get the handle on it. Now a two-on-one break. And she will go straight to the basket and miss the layup. Rebound to Roan State. Jayla Cobb hounded by Kyra Sharon. Katie Walker now back out to Cobb. Back to Walker into Williams. Now back to Holt. Three second violation. There's a lot of movement around there with the ball, but a lot of standing by Williams and Holt. Holt at 5'10 and Williams at 5'9. Not sure that Lady Pioneers have a player on the team taller than 5'7. Inside pass. Nye Rankins gets hammered by Bristol Calhoun. If she goes to the basket. So she will walk to the free throw line as Bristol Calhoun picks up her first or her fourth foul. And a full timeout will be called by head coach Otis Keys. And we'll take a break. As the Lady Pioneers are down by five with 2.15 to go in the third quarter. You're listening to the Ball State Sports Network. State leads 54-49 in the third quarter. Nye Rankins at the line. The Lady Pioneers next will play on the road at Jackson State on Wednesday, January 7th, 17th. As Rankins delivers on the first free throw. She's now two for three in the game. Her only scoring has been at the free throw line. Both men's and women's action at Jackson, Tennessee against the Green Jays on Wednesday. Next home game, next Saturday. That drive is no good. Katie Walker gets her own rebound. and Now Jayla Cobb with it. Back out to Walker. Eight on the clock. Kick over to Holt. Fakes a three. Monica Peralta on her. Holt will get her own rebound. And clock is stopped due to a problem, I think, with the shot clock not being reset. The Lady Raiders will get the ball. That helped Roan State out as like Ball State had some pressure on the on the ball. Inside pass, nice pass by Jayla Cobb into Holt. 
for an easy two. That was a no-look pass and almost a steal by Katie Walker in the backcourt as the Lady Pioneers, like they're struggling a bit to solve the full-court pressure by Roan State. Northrop now hawked by Jayla Cobb, trying to use that off arm. She gets by. Now it's a one-on-four with a left hand, no good. But she'll draw the foul and get back to the free throw line. Anderson Holt picks up her first foul of the ball game. Northrop can't get that first one to roll in. One of two on that trip. Token full court pressure, actually about three quarter pressure. Almost a turnover there by Bristol Calhoun. Gives it up to Williams who drives. Hard off the glass, no good. Nye Rankins with the rebound. Gives it up to Monica Peralta who tries to split. Jayla Cobb and Jasmine Williams and she travels. She had an outlet pass, but thought she could get right through. Holt from the corner, no good. Ella Disney tried to get that rebound, but it kicks over to Jasmine Williams. And a foul. We call it on Ella Disney. Get her first. Team fourth. Jasmine Williams will go to the line for two as... Shayona Morton enters for Aniston Holt with 54 plus seconds on the clock. Williams misses the first free throw of the quarter. She's two for four for the game. Stuck on six points, got all those in the second, and misses the second one. Tapped around, and Ella Disney comes down with the loose ball. She will bring it across the timeline. Being guarded by Jasmine Williams. Switch made and a switch back. Nye Rankins started to drive and 5'9", Shayuna Morton from Maplewood High School just down the road here in Nashville, Tennessee. Cut off her ankle to the basket. Her kick out was Kicked by Lady Raider Northrop. Trying to hide, now drives, and a scoop shot is no good. Cobb finds herself at the free throw line and bulls her way in for a score. Could have been a three-point opportunity, but no whistle blown. Kyra Sharon drives to the basket and she'll be fouled. Fouls on Katie Walker. So they got two personal fouls on Katie Walker. I only have one. Sharon at the line. She'll cash in on the first free throw. Three for five at the line, now four for six. She has 16 for the game. Five seconds to go, double team as that ball is dribbled out of bounds. <laughs> Head coach Otis Key is pretty excited. That ran into Sean Bullock there, the referee, just to the right of the scorer's table. They will put 1.9 on the clock. Peralta will inbound right next to David Harnish. They won't be able to get a shot off. Northrop could not get away from two Roan State defenders. And the Lady Vols. Lady Vols. <laughs> I do that once a game. The Lady Pioneers of Vol State are down by four after being down by five at the end of the quarter. 58 to 54, we'll take a break on the Ball State Sports Network.
Tim Reese back at the Toyota of Gallatin Broadcast Center. Rhone stay with the nice passing as Morton gets the first bucket of the fourth quarter. Shayona Morton with her first field goal. Gives the Lady Raiders a 60 to 54 lead. Lady Pioneers led this game early, but at 20 to 17, the Lady Raiders had the lead and have not given it up. There have been some ties, but never relinquished the lead again. Jasmine Williams kicks inside to Cobb over to Oliver for another easy bucket. Nice passing by Roan State. Ella Disney dribbles right, goes left, tried to get the runner to go and cannot. Morton with the rebound. Calhoun gives it up to Oliver. Left hand layup, no good. As Peralta with the spin move to get out of the way of Jasmine Williams, continuing to dribble. Gives up to Sharon for three from the corner, no good. Well, it is good. It had to hit three different spots on the rim, though, to go in. Kyra Sharon, better lucky than good right there. Personal foul on Kayla Northrup. That'll be her third. As Jersey Mike subs, first time in, in the fourth quarter, Emma Disney and Bree Ellis in for Ella Disney and Nye Rankins. Jasmine Williams, Jayla Cobb, Bristol Calhoun, Shayona Morton, and Addison Oliver of the five in the ball game. As Morton's pass knocked out of bounds by the Lady Pioneers. Eight on the shot clock, 62-57 lead by Roan State. Cobb will inbound. Williams thought about a three. She'll get it back over to Cobb, the leading three-point shooter in the conference. And she won't get a shot. she get one, but it'll be after the shot clock goes off. And Ball State has a chance to cut into this five-point lead. And pass is knocked away by Oliver. And she'll wait for her teammates as... Calhoun will be called for a travel. Later, Lady Raiders had a three-point lead after quarter number one, a five-point lead after quarter number two, and a four-point lead after quarter number three. Rome State looking for their second win in the conference. They have a win against Southwest Tennessee. Sharon tripped up going into the paint, and the pass is stolen by... Calhoun to Cobb as Emma Disney got her money's worth on that foul, making sure that Addison Oliver does not get an easy run to the basket. That's four fouls on Emma Disney. Armani Tolliver and Nye Rankins check in for Lady Raiders. Kyra Sharon and Emma Disney will take a seat. Addison Oliver back at the line. Going to be her 11th free throw attempt of the ball game, and she gets that one to drop. 16 points now for Addison Oliver, just over her average. As she picks up two free throws. Now a seven point lead. I believe the largest lead of the game is eight or nine for Roan State. Armani Tolliver, Monica Peralta at three points. She's gonna drive, go in with the left hand. A little too hard, smallest player on the court. Armani Tolliver going after 5'9", Shiona Morton, and Morton's gonna pick up, I think the, actually the Lady Pioneers are gonna get a foul called on Bree Ellis. She was laying on top of Shiona Morton. That's four fouls on Bree Ellis. 
And Coach Otis Key talking to Dwayne Burks about what had happened. That wrestling match on the court. Brand spanking new court here this past summer. Late in the summer laid down in the Richard Moore Gymnasium here in Pickle Field House. Beautiful court. Did a great job. Williams with the loft pass received from Calhoun. Now back into Oliver being guarded by Bree Ellis. The right-handed scoop shot is good by Oliver. And a timeout is called. I believe that's going to be Roan State. It'll be a full timeout. Roan State now takes a nine-point lead. We'll take a break along with them. You're listening to the Ball State Sports Network. Welcome back to Galton, Vault State Lady Pioneers basketball. Hello to Kaylin Conrad, who sent in the first email today. Kaylin Conrad is a, an alumni of Vault State, played softball here last year. Her and Mal say hello. She says she misses Johnny Lynn, her softball coach. I'm sure you miss Christian as well. Watching the game, listening in. Kaylin, tell me where you are again on your email. I've got too many things to remember. Is Kyra Sharon with the three-pointer? Might have been tipped as it comes up short. Jasmine Williams will drive, knocked away by Monica Peralta. There's a three ball for Jayla Cobb. As no foul called as Armani Tolliver comes out of there, knocked away by that's Calhoun, and now Williams. Looked like a hockey game breaking out there. It's no fighting, but ball looked like it was on ice moving around. Foul on Nye Rankins as we get through all that. Her third foul. Calhoun inbounds to Williams. Love doing some Lady Pioneers softball when I got a chance when I wasn't doing the baseball broadcasting. Pass inside, knocked away, but a foul. Be called on Nye Rankins, and that is number four. Now five fouls, so shooting two is Addison Oliver. She's been pretty comfortable at the free throw line. Four for six in the first half. She picks that one up. Six for seven in the second half. Ten point lead. Roan State now an 11 point lead. Largest lead of the game. Monica Peralta was hiding down here in this corner. It's the pass from Tolliver. Could not get loose. Nice no-look pass to Kayla Northrup, but she ran into a Lady Raider, and now we have another wrestling match on the court at the free throw line. Jump ball is called. That will be retained by the Lady Pioneers, but they will keep 11 seconds on the shot clock because that's a newer rule. Shot clock does not reset. Peralta inbounds. She's going to shoot about a 19-footer, and it's no good. Shayona Morton gives it over to Cobb. Now, Cadence Jackson 
running the offense for Roan State. Interior pass to Morton, who's going to throw one up from the free throw line. No good. Kaylin Northrup, <laughs> good thing she knocked that one forward. And the layup goes in. That went around the rim and in as Coach Key will call a full timeout. First two-point field goal of the quarter, actually of the half, for Kayla Northrup. Well, of a full timeout, I'd like to thank our sponsors. Once again, Toyota of Gallatin, Jersey Mike's located right across the street. And you go over to Jersey Mike's and you might see Caleb, one of their uh, assistant managers over there. He's uh, similarly, um, what's the word I should use here? Situated as I am, he's Husky. He's one of us Husky guys. So if you see him over there, tell him Tim Reese said hello. He might give you a free pickle or two, I don't know. Uh, or you might say hello to Julie Johnson, the general manager over there, but they are uh, fine supporters of Vol State Athletics, along with Full Count Ministry, is some of the equipment that we are using for our broadcast here today. Getting less and less now with A.J. Fawson on the uh, job of improving the broadcast here for the Ball State Sports Network. We have an actual, I mean, that's a real camera right there. Matthew Gregory's operating. I mean, he can zoom. I mean, that thing will do anything but uh, put butter on your bread. That's a legitimate looking camera right there. It doesn't look like that little small $250 Sony video camera that I buy. We thank A.J. Fawson head engineer here at Ball State for helping us with the broadcast. Jasmine Williams pass up across the timeline to Jayla Cobb. Williams will drive, kick down on the block to Addison Oliver who gets an easy bucket. Ten in the quarter. 23 unofficially for the game. Bree Ellis for three. No good. A little to the right. A two on one developing for Roan State. Oliver comes in and Tolliver was anticipating her continuing to drive. She pulled up and gets another field goal. Roan State pulling away up by 13 as Bree Ellis drives to the basket and gets fouled. She'll go to the line for two shots. I believe Shayona Morton call for that and she will. That's her second foul. According to my score sheet, she will come out of the game as Aniston Holt checks in. Bree Ellis, her first time at the free throw stripe today. And the first one is no good. Ellis came in averaging 5.6 points a game. Can't get either one of them to drop four. And Lady Pioneers running out of time, down by 13. Interior pass to Cobb, and Cobb won too many passes, but it's knocked away by Ellis with 18 on the shot clock. Cobb finally gets it into Williams, who's able to get by Bree Ellis, but they're going to call Ellis on the foul, and the continuation is going to give the basket to Jasmine Williams. I believe that's number five on Bree Ellis. So her night or afternoon has ended. Williams can't get the free throw to go. Eight for the game for Jasmine Williams. Didn't start the game, but she's played a significant role. Three-pointer no good by Emma Disney. She better be careful. She's got four. Uh, Sharon gets the errant pass, and she'll go to the line, drawing the foul. 
by Jayla Cobb, her second. Only the second team foul for the Lady Raiders. Sharon at the line will get the first one to roll in. And off the rim, off the backboard, and in the cylinder. Down by 14. Cadence Jackson kicks over to Jasmine Williams as a free path to the basket, but comes up short. Monica Peralta with the rebound behind the back dribble. Picks up her own errant dribble and over to Sharon. No good. Rebound to Williams, who taps it away over to Oliver. Now back to Holt. Holt will bring it up court and pass to Williams. Cadence Jackson, now to Oliver. Dribbles, comes back to the corner for Jackson. Three-pointer is good. Cadence Jackson's first bucket since the second quarter, and it's a three ball, her first three of the ball game. Gives the Lady Raiders now a 16-point lead as they have blown it open here in the fourth quarter. Dribble is knocked out of bounds. Jayla Cobb, Sharon's going to step back three. He's going to be short, hit the nylon, and go out of bounds. Kira Everett from Halls High School in Knoxville, Tennessee, 5'5 five, five freshman, enters the game. She'll replace Jasmine Williams in a fine basketball game today. Handling the ball, rebounds, defense, Unofficially will, if she's done, finish with eight points. Jackson over to Oliver. Oliver drives with the left hand, switches back to the right hand, misses the layup, rebound to Peralta. He dribbles up, up court. She's got Disney to her left. She kicks over, and Emma Disney with the left-handed layup is good. Six points. Oliver goes all the way down court. Emma Disney didn't want to reach in. She didn't want to be called for her fifth foul, but she did it anyway. Oliver apparently was invisible, dribbling down the court, and nobody picked her up. Underneath basket is Holt, and the inbound pass finds her. 4-2, 79-63. Peralta with the one-handed runner. No good, Disney. Rebound, no good. Tolliver picks up the loose ball. Interior pass to Northrop goes right up with the left hand. She's going to draw the foul. Looks like Jayla Cobb, number 24, will pick up her third. And Northrop back at the line. And the first action of the ball game for Tia Faulkner from Sevier County. Sevierville. Tennessee, Sevier County, is the land of Dolly Parton. As well as Vol State baseball players, Cam Hodges and Corbin Overbay. Two free throws good by Northrop. She's getting her free throw percentage up. She taps that one away from Bristol Calhoun. Seventeen points unofficially for Kayla Northrup for Ball State. Calhoun inbounds to Oliver, who dribbles out of a double team. Now up to Jackson, who kicks to the left. Holt with a stutter step underneath the basket. She had a wide open layup, but I think she was trying to get Faulkner a shot with just a little over a one minute to go here in the ball game. Stay tuned. About 30 minutes after this game concludes with Monica Peralta and a three-point shot right there. And a timeout call by Otis Key. We'll keep it right here. Lady Pioneers down by 11. But the men's game will start approximately 30 minutes after this game concludes. 
the high-flying Roan State Men's Ball Club, fresh off of a championship, national championship run a year ago. They won the conference tournament, ended up going to Hutchinson, Kansas for the national championship, ended up getting bounced by Butler believe Community College. It might be in Kansas, which is, I believe, where Hutchinson, Kansas, the national championship for junior, junior college basketballs played. Lady Raiders trying to inbound, get it inbound to Oliver. Back to the inbounder. That is Kira Everett. She will pass and drive. Emma Disney apparently did not want to play the last minute of the game. She has a reach in foul. That is number four on her. Aniston Holt will go to the line. Emma Disney will be replaced by Ella Disney. Who will be required to take a step over toward the scores table. Aniston Holt at the line. She is perfect. Four for four in free throws. Looking for her 17th point. And she won't get it on that free throw. Rebound to Peralta. Oliver, who was hounding Peralta as she dribbled up court. We'll pick up her fourth foul of the game. And that is only, I think, the fourth. Okay, so not in the bonus. With 52.6 to go in the game. Armani Tolliver. Inbounds to Monica Peralta, kicks over to Ella Disney. A deep three is off the front of the iron, and rebound goes to Holt of the Lady Raiders. Up court pass to Jackson, free shot to the backboard is Cadence Jackson. Ella Disney with the left hand, no good. Wild shot right there, and the shot clock is off. 82 to 68. Everett's going to go ahead and fire, and she's going to hit the three. Might as well, her first bucket of the ball game. Monica Peralta will drive and get the foul called. Let's see if this is number five on Oliver. It is not. Kira Everett will pick up, I think, is her second. Monica Peralta at the free throw line where she's one for two today. So the Lady Pioneers will lose their sixth game in conference play, fall to 0 and 6 and 1 and 16. And the overall record, the Lady Raiders will move to 11 and 5 and 2 and 3. As Peralta misses both free throws, Sharon for three, no good. Rebound to Ella Disney. She can't get the shot off at the buzzer. And this ball game is over. As the Lady Pioneers fall in defeat, 85 to 68. We will take a short break and I'll come back with unofficial statistics here in just a few minutes. As the Lady Pioneers lose 85 to 68, you're listening to the Ball State Sports Network. We're all working in the cloud, but what really is the cloud? If you start pulling back the clouds themselves, you find out it's an infrastructure. Computer science is really computer engineering. Right now, Middle Tennessee is quickly becoming a growing tech hub with several IT companies that are looking for skilled workers. If you're pursuing the CIT program at Ball State, you're preparing yourself to fill those positions. Have you ever wondered what happens when you click buy it now? A whole series of transactions take place from the manufacturer to your front door. That is logistics and supply chain management. At Vol State, we offer end to end supply chain courses. Going into the future, our students need to understand these processes. A lot of business is dependent upon getting a product on time. Students here at Vol State are able to leave here with that knowledge. Because the supply chain is counting on me. 
The volunteer state has always been home to pioneers. Dreamers and hard workers blaze their paths here. From the TVA to Mountain Dew to touchscreen monitors to the Grand Old Opry, Tennessee has been home to innovators, creators, and entertainers. From humble beginnings to changing the world, Tennesseans have pushed the boundaries of what is possible. We pioneer healthcare, infrastructure, engineering, and product development. At Volunteer State College, we've developed our degree certifications to carry the torch of Tennessee success with flexible options to help you blaze your pathway. We are searching for pioneer-minded students who are on their own journey of growth. Learn how these pathways are shaping the future of Tennessee. Like those that have come before, blaze your pathway. Your career awaits, Ball State. State where the Lady Pioneers have taken a loss to the Lady Raiders of Rome State, 85 to 68. Here are the final totals, unofficially in scoring for first for the visiting winners. The Lady Raiders led by Addison Oliver, 25 points to lead all scores. 16 for Aniston Holt, 14 for Jayla Cobb, 11 for Cadence Jackson, 8 for Jasmine Williams, 6 points for Bristol Calhoun, 3 for Kira Everett, late three-pointer, and two-point field goal by Shayona. Morton for a total of 85 points for head coach David Harnish in his fifth year. And for the Lady Pioneers, leading score, this is all unofficial again, Kyra Sharon with 21, Kayla Northrup with 17, 11 for Bree Ellis who fouled out, six each for Emma Disney and Monica Peralta. Four for Ella Disney and three points for Nye Rankins for a total of 68 points. The Lady Pioneers averaged 50 points a game coming into today's game, so 68 is 18 over their normal output, output and 73, almost 74 points for the Lady Raiders as they get 85. So the next ball game for... The Lady Pioneers will be next Wednesday at Jackson State, January 17th, 5.30 start time on the in central time zone, weather permitting. We're supposed to have some bad weather come in here soon, so we'll see what that does to uh, athletics here at Ball State. So this is Tim Reese, and big thanks to Matthew Gregory and A.J. Fawson for their help today as they are directing the show and running the camera so a big shout out to them. They will be handling duties as well for the men's action. We are 17 minutes away from starting lineup there, and we'll be back on this.